Laura Milton, an art historian, visits an exhibit in a cathedral. With the assistance of Father Marconi, her priest friend, she gains exclusive access to the facilities. Little does she know that this is the day evil awaits to materialize the sinister plans. During the first war in heaven, the portal to the lower realm opened as Lucifer, the transgressor, fell to the pit of damnation. Archangel Michael, the Hound of Heaven, followed him to bind him with unbreakable chains. Lucifer promised he'd someday escape and become the most powerful being. As time passed, legions of demons united with him to oust the reign of the supreme being. On Earth, his believers created a fortress at the gateway of hell to wait for his return to rule the world. At present, Laura approaches Dr. Russo, a professor at Turin University, to request the approval of her thesis. He firmly refuses, commenting that her claim of the non-existence of sacred and evil beings is arrogant. When when Laura pleads to discuss this further, the professor invites her to his apartment, which prompts the woman to leave. Afterward, she visits the exhibit where the Shroud of Turin, the cloth with an image of the resurrection of Jesus with his DNA, is displayed. She greets Father Marconi, who gives her an ID pass to the cathedral. The priest escorts her to a room where the sculpture of Archangel Michael beating the demon is displayed. He adds that it's here to guard the shroud. Laura insists that blaming the devil doesn't fix a broken heart after a loved one's loss, and the priest can only smile at her sympathetically. Then, he mentions prophecies of the devil returning to Earth. He bids her goodbye, and Laura begins sketching the sculpture when she hears someone call her name, despite being alone. As the exhibit ends for the day, a hooded person enters and heads to another room. Meanwhile, the devil statue Laura is drawing moves. She goes near to check it, unaware that the hooded woman Liz is watching her. Feeling strange, Laura explores her surroundings and discovers a raven. She turns it away without noticing Liz taking the sword from the statue. She bumps into a guard who reminds her of the time, so she surrenders her pass. Though she notices the sword missing from the statue, she ignores it. Unfortunately, the main doors are locked, so she looks for another exit and witnesses Liz decapitating the guard. She runs away and hides in a confession booth while Liz steals the Shroud of Turin. Father Marconi arrives and charges at the thief to stop her. Unfortunately, once he comes near her, he's kicked and stabbed in the chest. Liz takes the shroud but notices Laura's presence. So when the conspirators arrive, they open the confession booth. Liz stops them from eliminating Laura, saying she may be chosen. So they take her with them. Meanwhile, Father Marconi prays to Archangel Michael to use his body to beat the enemies. Mystical light descends from above and enters his body as the Archangel possesses him. He appears in front of the enemy's car, and Liz recognizes it's Michael in the priest's body. She commands the men to drive fast, and Michael runs after them. Unfortunately, he falls to his knees in pain, unaccustomed to a mortal body. On the other hand, in a hall where the wealthy gather, a boy excellently plays the violin. Dr. Laurent, who works for a biotech company, steps forward. He explains that they're able to attain the DNA of the most influential people in history and resurrect them using a cloning method that creates children that the rich can buy. Then, he introduces the boy as Antonio Vivaldi the master violinist. The foster parents of Antonio step up on the platform and proudly walk off with him. The room becomes filled with anticipation for the bidding of another child, so Laurent calls a nurse carrying a baby, introducing him as Michelangelo Bonarotti, the genius artist. Bids immediately skyrocket to 90 million euros, and the doctor smiles in satisfaction. Then, he notices Liz and discreetly follows her. They travel to the fortress where the lower realm's gates are located, and Laurent breathlessly marvels at the shroud of Turin in front of him. Liz commands him to prepare the surrogates, and the doctor proclaims that Lucifer will finally have the perfect vessel. Meanwhile, Laura awakens due to a loud crying. She discovers she's in a glass cell with three others, Sophia, Brenda, and Alina. However, the tension in the room worsens as Sophia has a panic attack which annoys Alina. So Brenda and Laura calm her down. Suddenly, men in medical suits barge into their cell. They take a few drops of Laura's blood and take a picture of her before leaving. On the other hand, hand, Michael limps back to the cathedral and enters the surveillance room where Bishop Bustamante and the assistant priest watch the footage of the infiltration. They see Father Marconi being stabbed without noticing that Michael, in Marconi's body, is behind them, chugging water. The two take it as a miracle upon noticing Michael. The archangel impatiently inquires about the whereabouts of the protectors of the shroud while feeling a splitting headache. The bishop explains that the protector, Cardinal Vincini, kept blabbering about prophecies of demonic beasts, secret factions, 
and visions of demons coming to Earth. Therefore, he was sent to St. Michael's Asylum. Then, Michael shows them Laura's exhibit pass and asks about her identity. The assistant priest informs him she's his friend. Michael orders them to keep his existence a secret, but the assistant priest asks him who he is. Upon grasping how oblivious they are, he leaves the room. But the priests stop him as they don't know what to tell the police. Hence, the archangel narrates Marconi's demise and the body returning to life. Then sarcastically asks the priest to make up something else since they wouldn't want to be sent to the asylum for telling the truth. Afterward, the archangel heads to the priest's car. New to driving, he accidentally hits the car parked behind him before driving away. Morning comes, and the archangel finally arrives at the asylum. But Cardinal Vincini suddenly appears behind him, armed with a gun, asking for his identity. Seeing the stranger as a priest, Vincini welcomes him with hostility, thinking he's Bishop Bustamante's man. He removes the younger man's collar and sees a vision of Archangel Michael's original body. Michael introduces himself properly, finding someone who finally understands, and informs Vincini that the shroud is stolen. After narrating the incident in the cathedral, Vincini tells him the asylum is a lookout for Lucifer's fortress. Michael insists that it's impossible for the demon to break free, but the protector repeats the prophecies, especially regarding the two beasts assigned to lead Lucifer's escape, the female demon, Liz, and the beast of the ground. Vincini declares that the time the enemies have been waiting for has arrived. He adds that that the faction offered babies as vessels for Lucifer, but none of their mortal bodies could contain him. Still, there's one eternal body, the mortal body of Christ, which can now be resurrected through science. Michael denies this idea and declares that the creator won't allow it. Vincini confirms that the prophecies are why the archangel is sent, so Michael confesses that he descended to Earth on his own accord. Meanwhile, Laura successfully convinces Brenda and Alina to find a weapon for their escape, but Sophia remains hopeless. Brenda asks if she's married, and Laura answers that someone took her husband's and child's lives. Simultaneously, Michael scouts the fortress, and Laurent informs Liz that Laura's DNA matches the ones they gathered from the shroud. In the lower realm, the ground trembles, and the the sword of Archangel Michael that's locking Lucifer's chains loosens as the boulder cracks open. The demon pulls the chains and finally breaks free. In the fortress, the doctors enter the glass cell to materialize the plan, but the women fight them off, except for Sophia. Unfortunately, they fail as they're outnumbered, so Laura and Brenda get taken and sent straight to the clinic. The women frantically struggle as doctors implant the DNA gathered from the shroud into their uterus. Laura desperately asks what's happening, so Liz explains she will have a baby. Liz dementedly tells her she knew the artist was chosen since her sketch of Lucifer in the cathedral was terrific. Consequently, Vincini and Michael arrive outside the fortress, and the protector hands a gun to the archangel. Vincini prays for him, but he also asks if the creator is with him, and Michael claims responsibility instead of answering. That evening, Brenda and Laura, dressed in bridal gowns, are chained to a pole while the entire faction watches. Then, the beast of the ground arrives and drags them into a cage hanging by the entrance of the lower realm. The demon opens the gate, which lowers the cage into the pit. Lucifer transforms into a serpent and goes to the women, who are surrounded by demons holding them against the bars. When the serpent arrives, it enters Brenda's body. She collapses in pain and crawls to Laura for help, but she passes away. Then, a demon forces Laura to open her mouth. The serpent enters her body, and all the beasts around her disappear. Afterward, she steps into the middle of the fortress, and the the faction celebrates the success. Liz escorts her to her new glass cell and declares she's bearing a son, a better savior. Meanwhile, Michael infiltrates the fortress through a tunnel. Guards block him, but he fails to use the gun, not knowing how to. Fortunately, he fights and subdues them before dressing up in their clothes. He finds Laurent's lab and takes the shroud, then stumbles upon Laura's footage. The doctor suddenly arrives and sees Michael, so the angel subdues and interrogates him. But Laurent responds vaguely, mentioning the new beginning. Frustrated, Michael pushes him aside and unplugs the gas tanks to blow the place up while the doctor escapes. The archangel exits the room and it explodes. Then he proceeds to rescue Laura. Laura hugs Michael in relief, seeing Marconi alive, but the archangel informs her he's not the priest, so she runs away in fright. Michael catches her and explains he's not an enemy. He asks what's done to her, and Laura narrates everything. Right after, Michael and Laura rush into the tunnels. When the archangel declares it's safe from pursuers, 
Rivers, the beast of the ground, tackles him. Michael hides the shroud behind rocks and fights back, but his mortal body has limited strength, and he faints. Concurrently, Liz's men find Laura and drag her back. She threatens Liz that she'll take the baby's life, and the demon becomes furious. Moments later, Michael awakens, chained near Hell's Gate, so he uses his strength to break free. Then, he opens the gate to confront Lucifer, and when the beast of the ground arrives, the archangel jumps into Hell. Meanwhile, life in Laura's womb develops rapidly. In the lower realm, Michael looks for Lucifer, but he's gone. A group of demons greet him, led by Mammon, who explains that their leader is already on Earth and they'll join him soon, locking Michael alone in Hell as they rule. Then, they chain the angel using Lucifer's sword. In the fortress, Laura feels happy upon seeing her child thriving, but the fetus suddenly turns into a demon, and she wakes up from the nightmare with Liz by her side. The woman probes if Lucifer has been speaking with her, and Laura turns away from her. Liz narrates how the first war in heaven occurred and praises her master, but Laura ignores her and notices how her body is turning younger. The demon explains that her body is being perfected, but Laura won't take any of it and argues with her. Angered, Liz threatens her that it's the last time she'll allow disrespect. Simultaneously, Doll, a young lady who looks half demon, half mortal, approaches Michael. She's followed by the stolen, the discarded vessels for Lucifer. Doll negotiates with Michael that they'll free him if he helps them go home. Michael agrees and takes the pledge but insists on retrieving his sword. Grunt, Doll's companion, mocks his vulnerable state, so the angel repeats that he needs his sword. Unfortunately, the demons arrive, and the stolen rush into hiding. On the other hand, the serpent goes out of Laura's body to speak with her. She asks if Lucifer took her family, but he denies it. Then, she sees Liz and declares she hates her, so the serpent tells her that the demon envies her and asks if she wants to end Liz's life, to which she agrees. Soon, Laura's belly becomes more prominent, ready for birth. Her veins pop from her skin, and she turns pale while dreaming of having her baby in her arms. She hears Lucifer's voice telling her to surrender herself as he can't come to Earth without her. Lorend and Liz watch her through the window, and the doctor worries about her health. However, the demon insists that she's getting stronger despite her appearance because she's bonding with the child. Suddenly, the electricity goes out, and the doctor attending Laura gets thrown out of the window. She walks out of the room and happily attacks the doctor she sees, ending two lives. However, she regains her real self and becomes horrified by the lifeless bodies. She hides from the faction and locks herself in the storage room, where she sees Bleach. Lucifer yells in her body and stops her from taking it, but Laura's determination overpowers the demon's control, so she chugs everything. Liz frantically kicks the door open, and Laura smiles, saying the baby's gone. She throws up blood and collapses, but Liz taunts her more, saying Lucifer will consume her. Suddenly, Laura attacks her and pins her down. Lucifer, controlling the woman, threatens Liz that this is the last mistake he'll allow. He commands Liz to end everyone who knows about his upcoming resurrection and comments about how the child comes to love Laura, which is unexpected. Therefore, he tells Liz to end Laura once the baby is born. Lucifer and Laura's body strides out of the room, frightening Laurent, who just arrived, and orders the doctor to remove him from Laura's womb. Once alone, Liz drowns in envy. On the other hand, Cardinal Vincini prays to the creator to help Michael win the battle, while Lucifer leaves Laura's body first to mock the chained archangel. He tries convincing Michael to switch sides as he boasts about his new body, which the creator originally designed. The serpent leaves the realm, and Michael realizes he's been foolish for thinking he alone can stop this. He concludes that Lucifer's plan won't materialize as someone is more powerful than him. Then, Dahl arrives to free him, but the chains won't budge. Michael orders them to give him his sword instead. And finally, Grunt brings the sword. Dahl rushes to help him, and they drag the heavy weapon to Michael as the demons arrive to stop them. Mammon tries tricking Grunt into bringing him the sword in exchange for taking the stolen home, but Dahl persuades him otherwise. Finally, Michael holds the sword and transforms into his original body. He subdues the demons and thanks the stolen. Dahl reminds the promise, and Michael states the oath, but he hurriedly leaves and vows to return. Once he's out from the lower realm, he returns to Marconi's body. He takes the shroud from where he hid it and looks for Laura, who's unconscious in a bedchamber. He tells her the child isn't evil, but Lucifer answers him. Believing the woman is still in the body, Michael brings her to a vacant room where he can try to explain his conclusion. However, Lucifer controls Laura's body and torments Michael to worship him. Michael refuses and tells him his conclusion that the child will take control of Lucifer since the child is an eternal being who's more powerful. And from then, Lucifer will be bound forever. Laura's contractions begin, and Lucifer pants in pain, trying to stop the birth due to Michael's explanations. Liz and Laurent arrive, and Lucifer commands them to end the 
baby's life. However, Liz thinks it's Laura talking, so they drag her to deliver the child by the gates of hell. The faction gathers as they await the birth of Lucifer's vessel. Once the baby is born, Liz carries him away from Laura and shows him off to the faction. Then, she commands the beast of the ground to open the gates of hell where Laura is lying down. Having no strength, the woman tries to move to the edge when the gate opens but still falls into the pit. Then, Liz summons the beast to end everyone's life, so it uses its chain sickle to eliminate the faction. Laurent remains the only survivor, and Liz lets him hold the child briefly before taking his life. Liz hums while walking in the middle of the pool of lifeless bodies, carrying the baby. The beast of the ground returns to the gate to check if anyone remains alive and to release the demons. Fortunately, Michael arrived moments earlier and rescues Laura, so they run after Liz. Just in time, Laura stops Liz from driving off with her baby. She pushes the demon away and rides the car. Liz begs the archangel not to harm Lucifer, but Michael clarifies that the baby isn't Lucifer and is an eternal being born to bind the demon forever. Michael hands the shroud to Laura, instructing her to find Vincini. The archangel stays behind because he has a promise to keep. The roars of demons echo, so he hurriedly returns to the gate. As the portal opens, the demons scamper to escape. Michael tries closing the gate, but unfortunately, the beast of the ground throws him away. Then, Michael sees the explosives Liz set up to bury the place, so he goes to it and thanks Father Marconi for lending him a body and says he prefers his original one. He detonates it, and the fortress collapses, blocking the gate under the rubble. Laura finds Vincini, and the two return to the cathedral with the baby and the shroud. Bishop Bustamante questions the existence of the baby, but they remain quiet. Soon, the shroud is back on display with the same security protection as before. Michael returns to the lower realm in his original self to bring the stolen home as promised. Many years later, the baby has grown into a boy who Laura raises with the help of Father Vincini. Hiding behind the shadows, Liz watches him and calls Lucifer. The child turns to look at her with the serpent's black smoke seeping from his nose. It eventually returns inside the boy, accompanied by Lucifer's groaning while the child calmly stares at Liz. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.